all of us who've been parents have, you know, we've seen young kids, maybe, I don't know, ages four to eight or so with those never ending why questions. Why is the world this way? And it goes on and on and on. And I guess I'm wondering, do you think those are different than the kinds of questions that we have as, a, as adults? Or is it, is it just kind of an extension of those why questions that we had when we were very young? And really, this is directed to any of you. Mm. Yeah, well, well, one thing you do find empirically is that when kids ask why questions, they usually don't have an immediate goal in mind. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they're just curious. They just want to know why that's a feature of the world. And I think one thing that you find with adults is that it starts to feel like a luxury to get to ask those kinds of questions. We tend to ask, why do I need to put this number on line five of my tax return, right? We're, we're, insofar as we have curiosity there, it's very instrumental. It's motivated by wanting to solve a particular problem. We're not really seeking knowledge for its own sake. And so I think something that we, can, that we often try to cultivate as adults is that kind of childhood curiosity uh, and wonder. But I think you do see that as a developmental shift, um, typically. Um, so you're saying that we, we often, as adults, we lose that that sense of wonder. We, we can. It, it doesn't have to happen. We can do things to cultivate it. Um, but I think uh, a lot of us find, at least I find this even as a scientist, I feel like I have to make space to get to approach things in that way where I'm not thinking about the immediate goal of learning about this. I'm thinking about, you know, it learning me, for its own sake. It makes me think of that wonderful line from um, Rachel Carson. And Rachel Carson famously said if, if she had if she had one gift from the good fairy, it would be to give all children an unshakable sense of wonder that would last throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. And that would drive and inspire them and would in drive and inspire all kinds of um, new learnings and all disciplines if we could all hold on to that sense of wonder. I think it comes from, it's like a, it appears in a gap between something that we are dimly appreciate has a, a, a pattern or a harmony or an elegance about it but we don't fully understand how that arises, and that drives the, the curiosity to learn how it works, how it's put together. Yeah, so um, we, you know, as children, we, we're natural explorers. You know, that's exactly what we do. We are throwing stuff against the wall to see if it breaks. You know, of course, the parents get kind of crazy with this, but, but those are experiments which are really an engagement with the process of discovery, you know. I am here in this world, I don't know exactly how the world works, and I'm going to play with it. So there is an aspect of playfulness, you know, which is so important. And those why questions, they kind of complement that, and they're asking us these questions because they need to know in order to continue this sense of exploration. But I think what tends to happen, and I think Rachel Carlson would be one that would say that, is that with the educational process, what happens is that we become trained to shift the why questions into how questions. Mm -hmm. And that shift, you know, this sort of pragmaticism that comes with the act of learning in schools, you know, you have to do this task and not that task, but I'm really interested in that task, but it doesn't matter. This is the problem set that you have to solve and it's due tomorrow, so get going. Um, that is the way education works, but it, it sort of forces you to kind of focus in directions where your mind may not want to go, but that is in a sense, and so as an educator, you know, I, I think it's so important that we always tease this sense of wonderment when, when you're learning a subject so that, that that appetite for being marveled, you know, in love, passionate about the mystery of existence, there's so much stuff we don't know, doesn't die away. And perhaps scientists, to a certain extent, they manage to cultivate that, you know, they kind of survive the onslaught. And, and, and there was a very famous physicist called Isidore Rabi who says that the physicists, I think I would say all scientists, but he was you know, a physicist, is, we are the Peter Pans of society because we just don't want to grow up. We want to keep asking these questions. You know? And so in a sense, we have so much to learn from the children. Yeah, there's a, the playfulness too. You know, the, you know, the great psychoanalyst Winnicott, he's, he talked about how children can... Um, operate in two parallel universes. You know, they know when they're playing a game that they're not really in a spaceship. But they are in a spaceship, but they're not in a spaceship. And they live in this kind of imaginative realm where their cardboard box is a spaceship. And the best scientists maybe manage to hold on to that possibility of playfulness, of living in two realms of possibility and seeing where it clicks so that the how questions that, that only come with more training start to appear.